It sounds very much like the Raptors are not going to be tearing it down or making some sort of significant moves with Pascal and OG. Of course, you know, something might happen. Offers might come up tonight. Uh, it could come up ahead of free agency. It could come up shortly after free agency. You know, that frenzy is over. You never fully know. Um, but at the same time, as it looks to you right now, Grinch, that it does not appear like the Raptors are pivoting towards that sort of tear down or sort of re rebuild where you realign some of your veteran players into future assets. I mean, it's, it's, I think once they made the decision to, at the trade deadline to add and bring in, uh, yeah, Capertle, it really did sort of set them on a path that for them to kind of get to the off season after, you know, things worked out quite well with, with Pirtle in the lineup and it kind of can, it all kind of confirmed what they were thinking that, you know, that, that, you know, they were a different team with him on the floor than they were previously that I think once that happened, um, it made any kind of big step back scenario unlikely. And, you know, it's not that they haven't looked into the possibility. We all know that, you know, they've looked into the possibility of, of trading any of these players and they did it at the trade deadline and there's, you know, I'm sure they've listened and had conversations all the way along. And, and you know, and whenever we talk about this stuff, it usually comes down to OG or or Siakam and usually it ends up being Siakam just on the age front. Mm. Um, you know, there's been very little indication that they want to um, take a major step back. And I think when you look at how all of this kind of pieces together, um, it doesn't. It doesn't make a ton of sense to have to make the move for Pirtle and then not bring back Fred Van Vliet. It doesn't make a ton of sense to bring back Fred, Fred Van Vliet and not keep your leading scorer. Mm -hmm. And it kind of one decision just seems to flow from the other. And as you point out, like it's not like people are calling me and telling me this is our plan A, B, and C. But you know, you can. I, I have asked those questions very specifically to you know, Bobby and this eye and over the, you know, not like not yesterday, but over the course of weeks and months. And um, there's never been an indication that, that that's something they want to do or feel the urgency to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think we're more likely to be in kind of a, some version of, of the team that finished last year, last year, last season will return. And, you know, with some additions or tweaks or, or variations and, um, you know, and I think the, decision to re-up Gary Trent, which I think, you know, is that's maybe even further indication. And, and all along, it, you know, I uh, was always assured that, look, we'll, we will have the means to sign all of Fred, Turtle, and Gary. And uh, it, it's if anything with the cap going up. It looks more likely than, than ever. Yeah, no doubt. Um, okay, so a couple of things there. Um, first and foremost, with Jakob, I, I, we're hearing a little bit, you know, more speculation. I think uh, Mark Stein was on with J.D. Bunkins this morning, and he brought up the idea that, uh, you know, there is a significant market out there for Jakob Proto as a free agent. Obviously, he's unrestricted, so he's free to sign anywhere. He even brought up the idea of potentially going back to the Spurs, which would be, quite frankly, uh, devastating um, and almost... <laughs> but regardless, what what is your thinking in terms of um, Jakob Pertl and the chances of him re-signing in Toronto because I, I had to assume that when the Raptors traded for him that essentially, not that they had a concrete conversation like, you know, we're going to sign you to this, but they probably at least had to have a really strong understanding that we're not trading you just because we want to rent you for this potential play-in run. We <laughs> want to have you back as a piece of our future. Yeah, 100%. And um, I know almost from the day that um, Jakob was in Toronto. Uh, you know, when I spoke with people close to him, you know, there was an enthusiasm about being in Toronto, being back here, about this being kind of the stage for him to kind of take the next step in his career in his true prime. Um, you know, I think that there's a, a, a realistic or there's a, at least a a solid alignment as to, you know, what his value is in the marketplace. And, you know, it doesn't mean any deal is done or that it's, you know, you can take it for granted, mm -hmm. but like I would, you know, sure. There's going to be teams that are going to be interested, but I think, you know, the Raptors would have 
both the desire and the means to, um, you know, make it so that this is uh, the place where Yaka wants to play the primer of his career. And, um, and I know from his point of view, he's very open to that. So it doesn't mean, you know, stranger things can happen. And, and I think it also means, you know, the Raptors are in a position to take things for granted. But again, um, you know, it would be a little surprising and it would frankly be uh, a significant error <laughs> if, uh, if at this stage he lost Jakob Pertl for no return whatsoever. Yeah, fair enough. Um, okay, well, with, with Pascal, um, you know, I was having this conversation yesterday on the show with Jake Fisher of Yahoo. He brought up the idea that um, the Atlanta Hawks uh, have some real serious interest in Pascal Siakam. I wanted to know what you've heard about that um, in terms of the idea that, you know, Atlanta might jump in as, as a potential suitor. And as we know, teams can be interested in the Raptors players. doesn't mean the Raptors will deal them. So, Yeah, I mean, I've heard the same thing about Atlanta. Um, and, you know, maybe if they were going to trade you know, DeJounte Murray straight up, like, I don't know, wouldn't, I'm sure the Raptors would be interested in that. <laughs> but Wait, DeJounte but, for Pascal straight up? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I'm just pulling it out of my head, but I mean, sure, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not going to be John. It's not going to be John Collins. I don't think. Uh, well, so, will be John, if it's John Collins, it'll be John Collins plus. Right. Yeah. So, so I mean, you know, I think, um, yeah, I mean, Atlanta's a team. I think uh, Houston's a team. I think Dallas would love to give it a shot. Um you know, I wouldn't be all that surprised if Sacramento wouldn't kind of be wouldn't sniff around a little bit. Sure. But um, again, you know, from Pascal's point of view, there's been no indication from his side of things that he wants to do anything other than be in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And um, I think he'd be, you know, he really would want to get an extension from Toronto. Yep. I think, um, you know, I don't know if. You know, I think the Raptors moving on for Nick for Nick and a fresh start with a new coach probably helps Pascal. I don't think it was an obstacle in the past necessarily, but I think it's, you know, I think there'd be some, you know, there'd, there'd be it'd be greeted, you know, I think he'd be interested in a fresh start too. And um, and I think from the Raptors' point of view, like you got to be really really careful about moving on from players. That, you know, and this is another thing we've heard from, you know, this organization over the years is, is you know, who you know is, you know, you know they're very much a bird in hand type uh, organization, right? And, and they really uh, value knowing people, knowing where they're from, knowing all about them. And there's no better example than, than the relationship with Siakam over the years. And, you know, so you have a guy who's in his prime, who's productive, who's by and large uh healthy and can carry a big load and um wants to be here and so i think to kind of just casually you know sort of investigate trades that don't generate you know eye popping returns mm -hmm. um you know you really got to proceed with caution so um you know and it's, like i said i think yeah atlanta can be interested but i mean you know i don't know if if they have the the parts to make a deal happen.